Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. If we'll grab a seat, it's time to get started. Amen. We'll get into our service tonight. Mount Vale, if you can, help me make our guests and visitors welcome. We're so glad you're with us tonight. So glad those watching Facebook, live streaming, and all that good stuff. If you can, stand with me for the reading of God's Word tonight. Sister Della's coming. Good evening. It's so wonderful to be here. I want to thank God for everything He's done for us this weekend and what He's going to do. Just keep remembering Michael on Wednesday as he leaves um, to go uh, to his training. But anyway, tonight we're going to read in Psalms 150. This is, uh, I picked up the, one of the random Bibles in the sanctuary. Um, it's a different version. But in Psalms 150, beginning with verse 1, it says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in His heavenly dwelling. Praise Him in the mighty heaven. Praise Him for His mighty works. Praise His unequal, unequaled greatness. Praise Him with a blast of the trumpet. Praise Him with the harp. The glory and heart. Praise him with the uh, tambourine and dancing. Praise him with the string instruments and the flutes. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Verse number six. This is the one I really love. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. And tonight we are here. We are alive and well. And so we can praise the Lord. And so let, right now, let's give him our biggest praise that we have gave him that today. Let's say thank you, Jesus, for allowing us to be here tonight. Thank you for moving so that I can be here. Because God is an awesome God, and he's greatly and worthy to be praised. Praise the Lord. Somebody give the Lord a praise for his word tonight. Amen. the Lord. Good to see everybody out. If you'll stay remanded, remanded. Is that remanded or remain? Remain standing. Can I tell one on myself? Anybody want to hear something funny? I was preaching at 8.15 this morning. And uh, I meant to say shaking, but I said shucking. <laughs> so everybody was shucking corn in there before I got done. So I thought it was funny, even if it was me. It got Anyway, you preachers know sometimes you get your words out your mouth runs faster than your mind does. But anyway, hey, don't forget things that are happening. Don't forget tomorrow night's or Wednesday night service. Don't forget um, there's a benefit auction. When is that? The 20th? It's this Saturday. Don't forget that. Amen. we got vacation Bible school coming up in July. We've got the carnival thing. A lot of this will be on our screen. Uh, so don't forget all that. Sheriff, how many you got? Three? Like this? Sheriff's only got three. Can y'all help him out this morning <laughs> or tonight? Amen. Amen. How many's come to worship the Lord tonight? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm going to pray here in just a second, but I, uh, I like what our pastor said this morning. In a way, you get out of the service what you expect out of the service. If you just want to go through the motions and go home, then that's what you're going to have. But if you want some Holy Ghost fire to begin to fall in this house and in your life, then that's what you'll get. Amen. It's like when you go to McDonald's and you order a Big Mac. You don't expect a fish sandwich. You expect a Big Mac. Amen. So let's pray. Let's invite the Lord into the house and let's get into our service today. Father, we come to you tonight, God, giving you thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for your mercy and your grace and your loving kindness, Lord. We thank you, God, for all that you're doing here, Lord. We thank you for the men and women who have come to worship your name, God. We're asking you tonight, God, to move miraculously, God. Anoint our singers and musicians as they lead us into worship, God. Anoint our pastor tonight, God, as he brings forth the word, God. Anoint the word and let it go forth, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the move of your spirit this morning, God, and we're asking for another move tonight, Father God. Do mighty acts, mighty wonders, mighty miracles, Lord. Save, sanctify, fill with the Holy Ghost, heal, deliver, strengthen, encourage, and set free in this place tonight, Father Lord. And Lord, we ask it all right now by the power, by the authority, and by the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, Amen.
Somebody give the Lord a good praise. Amen. Amen. Oh, come on now. Somebody give the Lord a real good praise. Hallelujah. Isn't he worthy? How many knows he's worthy? Amen. Y'all may be seated just for a moment. Ushers, y'all can seat for just a little bit. We're going to get to you just in a second. Um, pastor's giving us this opportunity. Okay. Pastor's giving us... Y'all see Jerry up here. Get up, bro. <laughs> You're about to see something we're going to show you just in a moment. But pastor's giving us opportunity to... How many's ever seen Coffee in the Word? Praise the Lord. Good crowd. Amen. If you didn't know, was it Friday? Friday, May the 20th. We've been doing that for two whole years. Amen. You ought to give the Lord a That's praise. Amen. Else, two years putting up with him. He's real sensitive. Y'all about to find out. Just a little bit. <laughs> we got, we've got a little video clip we want to show you. And I want to talk afterwards about our small life groups that we've got going and some that we would like to get started. Okay? So are y'all ready up there in the sound booth? Are they ready? Uh, go ahead and sh let's let's watch it. Y'all can see what we try to do. Shuck that video. We're gonna talk about shuck. Two, one. Good morning. We live. We should be live. We should be live. Let me poke you. Are you live? No, no more memory. We are <laughs> live. <laughs> See if he's live. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee in the Word in the Morning. Word in the Lord. Coffee. Hopefully you got your coffee. Most importantly, hopefully you got your Word. We say it all the time. You can live without coffee, believe it or not, but you cannot live without the Word. Amen. Good morning, Mount Bell. You, you ever have those people go five, four, three? Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. You're Buen alive. <coughs> Buenos dias. Bienvenidos to Coffee and the Word in the morning. Buenos dias. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Oh, man. I don't know those <laughs> words. It's about all I know. Okay. Oh. Good morning. Welcome to Coffee and the Word in the morning. We're a heavenly life, I guess. That's right, bro. But guten Morgen. Sprecke die Deutsch. Don't start that again. You tried Spanish last week. I did work. do Spanish last week. It did work. It did Nobody got online and said I messed it up. <clears throat> I will tell you, you did, you did not do a good job on that. Uh, that's German, if some do not know. Uh, camera, I don't think, but uh, we, uh, I got Jerry a short stove, so I look taller than he does. What is <laughs> this? Stove. It's, it's like a midget <laughs> is over here. We are just coming online a little bit, giving us a test run. Oh, hey. We're facing the wrong way. And Jerry's looking at himself. You're looking yeah. at the wall. Now we're working. Working. There you go. See, that's why we're doing a test run this morning. Dude, we're still trying to work the bugs out of the system. So go ahead and order them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I like this scene right here. We're about as live as we, we can get. Good morning, I guess. everybody. It's, it's doing the, the twirly thing. So we might be alive. We might not be alive. I like this scene right here. <laughs> It's the only place, only seat we can find for you. Help me, Lord. You got your word. Hey, I got a question for you. Yes. Are we live if nobody's watching you? Yes. Okay. Right. Had to ask. We're live. It's, it's different than a tree in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't like a bigger man. What? Oh. <laughs> Say something. I guess. <laughs> I, I feel inadequate. I mean, I, I just, you know, I feel like I'm sitting in the floor here, man. That's... Am I in the camera? No. I see that. I lean way over. You can't see me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> As you can see, we have way too much fun <laughs> doing all that. You didn't notice we were good morning, and now we're, we don't say good morning because we do it at night. So we used to do it every Wednesday morning at 8 o'clock. And did not Jerry look good sitting in the low stool? Come on now. I thought he looked good. How many agree he looked good sitting? Alabamans ought to be below. Come on now. Somebody help me tonight. <laughs> well, he does that on purpose because even though I'm on a low stool, I'm just as tall as he is. Somebody say amen somewhere. Amen. Come on now. 
Hey, real quick, before we get into do digress too far, I'm going to give a shout out to Amanda Rathman. She did that for the video for us. Can we give her a hand? Amen. Amen. But two years, May the 20th, and you can go back on Facebook and watch some of the old, old stuff. You can tell how unorganized or how inadequate we were at some of that stuff. But two, Why don't you look at me when you said inadequate? Well, I don't know. It's just natural. <laughs> but anyway, if you don't get it, if you've never watched Coffee in the Word, you ought to watch it. We try to, to give some good content in there uh, about the Bible and teaching and stuff. And we really started it when COVID hit and they shut the church down in a way. And we, right. we were doing parking lot church, but we weren't doing Sunday schools. We weren't having anything. So we just felt led and by the grace of the Lord and our pastor that he allowed us to do that, to begin to teach so people could get connected and stay connected and still get the word in them. Uh, to say all that, to say this about that little thing, uh, we have a thing now that we call small life groups and we may just change them to life groups, but it's, a, it's important, I think, sometimes that you see this is an interactive Bible study. So when you're on live with us, face, Facebook Live, you, you can type in questions, you can make comments, we read them back. And the key to this is, is for people to be connected to Jesus, first and foremost, connected to the Word and connected to each other. And we've got some life groups that are started. We have the Overcomers. Deborah's not here tonight. She's sick. And we also have Letters from God. From Amanda does them on Thursday night. Deborah does hers on Tuesday night. So they do it on Zoom. And also Brother Larry has a intercessory prayer team that comes down and prays every Tuesday night from 5 to 7. Um, so we've got a lot going on to Brother Don. He's not here tonight. He does once a month a bereavement, uh, what do you call that? Bereavement class. Bereavement class. They come together and share things that people have lost family members and lost uh, people. Uh, so uh, we got a lot going on. But I, want, I, I wanted to say this tonight. Pastor gave us just a few moments. It's very important, I think, that we do this because here's, here's, here's an odd statement for us. As the church gets bigger, we have to get smaller. Now, that don't make much sense sometimes if you think about it, but the problem is when you get real big, then people don't feel connected. And I believe, honestly, the more we get smaller in itself, the bigger we'll get. Amen. So I want to encourage you tonight, if you, if you don't belong to a, a, a life group or you can belong to one, please join one. Brother Matt and him does one live. What's it called? Family Matters, right? If you've never seen him Thursday, 6 o'clock. Am I right? Every other Thursday. Every other Thursday from 6 o'clock. It's a good one to go on and watch and, and, and see. And, and we've, got, we've got a few more. Am I missing somebody? Brother Allen, he's not here tonight either, but he does one every Wednesday morning. Every Wednesday morning at uh, Charlotte's Restaurant. What time? 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. He does breakfast with Jesus. If you want to go eat breakfast and study the Word, go see them, go see them over at Charlotte's over in Talbot. So there's a lot that we have, but I want to encourage you, if you don't belong to one, get one. And here's another thing. I believe this is a lot of our core group tonight. And if you would like to start one, come see me. You can do it based on your interest. It don't have to necessarily be a full-fledged Bible study. If you like to ride motorcycles and you want to have Bible study in the midst of your trip, you can do it. If you like to fish, you can pull together before you get out into boats and have a good Bible study and a good time. It don't have to be an hour long because how many know the fish don't bite all day long? you got to get out there and get them or get it when you're done. Either way, you inject the Word of God into it. And, and just to name a few things that I like to do. So and ladies may like to, what do ladies do? Cooking class. Yeah, see, Jerry class. would know what the ladies would do. Well, <laughs> no, it's, it, it, he's right, though. Cooking classes, uh, sewing classes, quilting classes, everything that is of interest of you, as long as you've got an interest, God is going to be in the midst of it. Amen. That's right. And it's a good way. And let me say this, Amanda, you you got some people that come on there and don't even come to this church, right? And I believe uh, Deborah does, too. So yes. it's an outreaching thing in itself. So if you'd like to start one, if you got an interest, come see me. We'll lay out the plan for you. We'll show you how it works and, and, and go from that way. So, um, again, you got anything else you want to say for we through? Uh, just that this is a way of getting back a lot of those members that left that does not know their way back to this building. We need to reach out to all of those that don't think that it's time to come back, that we know that it is time to come back, but we need to be reaching out. It is time to be reaching out. No matter what we need to be doing, we need to be reaching out. Amen. Amen. Can I give you a new nickname? No. How many remember Dorf? Oh, well, 
Well, that ain't going to work. Ain't none of the old people, remember? Not even the young ones, so forget it. It won't work. If you ever get a chance, go Google or if he's a little guy. <laughs> and I was thinking about Jerry sitting in the stool. But anyway, but hey, do this. If you'd love to start one, please come see us. We'd love to have you. We'd love to hook you up and get it going. And, uh, you know, it's, it's anything you want to do almost. It's open and, and as far as your interests are. And uh, so we'll show you. So with all that being said, um, can we give our pastor a hand for allowing us to do this kind of stuff? That's right. Amen. And, uh, and go live. So with all that being said. You got good night, Gracie. Good night, Gracie. If you never watch this, I say good night, Gracie. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a good praise tonight. Amen. Real quick, if you don't know what the, uh, and I may not hit them all, but you can go on our church center app to small life groups and you'll, you can pull that page down and it gives all that information. All right, if our ushers will get ready, we're going to move on. Since we've, how many know you, how many know the Lord has a sense of humor? If you didn't believe it, you should have watched it. <laughs> he lets us get away with that. But let's stand this morning tonight and we'll uh, get uh, ready to receive our tithes and offering. I shared with you this morning a little story of my granddaughter, and, and I thought it was so profound. And I just, I think sometimes we, all, during the times that we're in, where the gas prices are going out the roof, inflation's going out the roof, we almost panic and try to keep all we can keep to ourselves. But it goes back to the scripture. The Bible says, "If we give, He will give back to us." And here's the thing I want you to understand tonight: is as long as you give. I don't care what happens in this world, God is still in control. It just didn't sneak up on him, and he's not going to let you do without. Now, you might not get to eat steak every day, but you'll have something that you can eat. Amen? He said he would provide your needs, not your wants. How many like to have a new truck? Bass boat? Pontoon boat? I don't know what you women, new car? Praise the Lord. Those are wants a lot of times. He said he would give us what we needed. Amen. That's all he promised. So tonight, let's get ready to give. Let's pray. Let's invite the Father into the giving. Lord, we come to you tonight, God, giving you thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for all that you've done here, Lord. We thank you for the men and women who faithfully give to your name, Father, Lord, and to your kingdom, Lord. Lord, we ask you to bless the gift and the giver this tonight, Father God. And we ask it right now in the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody say it. Amen. Welcome to Mount Bell Church, a healing church for a hurting world. I am Lisa. We are honored that you have joined us in this service. If you are a first time guest or visitor, we are so glad that you are here that we have an exclusive welcome gift just for you at the Connections Desk. Come once, you are a visitor. Come twice, you are family. Now check out these upcoming May happenings. There will be a benefit auction held right here at the Pavilion on Saturday, May the 28th. It's a fundraiser from Nevaeh Fanny. She has a very rare autoimmune disease that has began to attack her organs, requiring a lengthy stay in California beginning in June. At the benefit, there will be food, games, a raffle, and a live auction. Fun begins at 11. The auction starts at 12.30. If you would like to make a donation for the auction, please see or call Sherry Livesey. Her phone number is 423-736-1245. Otherwise, please come out and help this family get Bea the care that she needs May the 28th. It will be greatly appreciated. Here at Mount Bell Church, we believe each one can reach one. Our goal is for souls. We are saving you a seat. Until next time, God bless. Now let us worship our Lord who is great and greatly to be praised.
And you still call me friend Cause the God of the mountain He is still God of the valley And there's not a place Your mercy and grace won't find me Come on, let's sing it unto him. There's nothing, there's nothing. Come on, lift your voice. Better than you, there's nothing. Better than you, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. One more time, come on, let's sing it. To him, yeah. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. If you believe that's right, give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. So good to see you in the house of the Lord. Let's give all of our guests and visitors a good warm welcome. Good to have you. Reach down, pick up your Bible. Hey, I have a request for the altar song. Can we do that for altar tonight? Can we do that song you just did?
Yes, <laughs> she said, what's up? <laughs> Amen. Matthew, if you have your Bible, chat Matthew. First book in the New Testament. If you can't find Matthew, just come on up to the front and go ahead and get in the altar. We know you ain't been in the Word in a while. Amen. Matthew chapter 24. I am going to be talking a little bit about end time, but not so much so as what Matthew 24 does. But I want to talk to you about some endurance. You got to make up your mind. I'm going to tell you this, you're always going to have folk for you, folk against you. And you know what? That can change from day to day. You know that? Look at me and smile at me. It's the truth. You never know. Amen. But you know something? I want you to want the, the one we're serving never changes. He loves you. Amen. He's for you. He's not against you. Amen. And I want you to be in heaven one day. Amen. I feel more and more as we close as we come closer and closer to the coming of the Lord. I want my heart is to see you draw close to God, to grow in Him. Amen. To be ready. Amen. I don't know. Amen. Who knows? We don't know. The Lord, the Lord may not come in another thousand years, and He may come in the next five minutes. We don't know when He's coming. But I know this right here. I know we have an enemy. The enemy of our soul is doing everything he can to discourage. He come to kill, steal, and to destroy. That you never say. He's saying. He's saying the truth. We say, Amen or not. Amen. So one little verse, verse thirteen. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. I don't, want to, I don't want to paint you a picture of it's an endurance match. But I want you to understand you're going to have to learn how to take some things and walk through some things, amen, and get through some hard times in life or you're not going to make it. Hey, most people, a lot of people, I know a lot of people serve God on a six-month basis. If it don't straighten up and get better, I'll find me something else to do. Can I tell you I'm in it to win it? I'm in it. I got in, amen. I got in almost 30 years ago, amen. And I want you to know with me tonight, amen, it's nothing better than him. They just sung that. And I thought, you know what, there's something, there's something truth about that song right there, amen. There's nothing I found in this world that's greater than serving the Lord tonight. Let's pray. Father, we're so thankful to be in the house of the Lord. Thankful for each and every one that's out here. Lord, to come to hear the word of the Lord. God, I'm asking, Lord, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost that makes preaching effective. God, touch me, oh God, your son and servant. Help me to step from the realms of the natural into the supernatural. And speak to the heart of men and women in this house tonight, God. God, tonight I'm asking you, Lord, for that one that may not be ready, Lord, for that one that's never been saved. God, draw them into altars of repentance. And God, I'm asking you for those, God, that are on the verge of giving up, throwing in the towel, God, that you would give them this end time endurance that I'm talking about. And we'll give you praise, honor, and glory. And everybody said, you might be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let's give our guests and visitors another good one. Welcome. So glad to have you here with us tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I don't, I don't know about you, but I, I want to finish my race, don't you? I don't want to give up. I don't want to quit. We talked a little bit about it today in Sunday school this morning, amen. But, you know, I, I, want, I want to finish my race. I don't want to just finish strong, amen, but I want to finish with some joy. I, I want to be what I'm supposed to be. How about you? I don't know about you, but I don't want to be, I, I don't want to get halfway through this thing or almost to the end of this thing and end up in bitterness, end up in, or, or end up backslid away from God, amen. I want to finish my race strong, amen. Luke 14 and 28, watch this. It said, for which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost whether he hath sufficient to finish it. Lest happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it, began to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Can I tell you that after almost 28 years, 28, 29 years of coming to this church, amen, I've made up my mind, I think I'm going to like it here. I, I mean, I don't know, I think I'm going to like it. But I've also made up my mind, this is where God sent me. I, I want to be everything I can be for him while I'm here, amen. We're talking about all these little small groups and stuff that's going on. If you don't have one, you ought to get one, amen. There's somebody out there needs to hear what you got to say, amen. And you ought to get you one, amen. And it's time that we come to the place, amen, that we realize that we can't just, can I just say, they can't make you mad enough. Hey, all the ladies wave at me in here, wave at me tonight. All the women wave, all the women waving, see all that? See, they can't make y'all mad enough that you won't go to Walmart. Boy, I got every one of them right there, didn't I? Good God Almighty, amen. You won't get so upset, bless the Lord, oh my soul, if we don't go to Walmart. We're going to Walmart, baby. I told them when I died, I want to be cremated. My wife, they're going to spread my ashes at Walmart. So she, all three of them right here in Jefferson City, one up next to my house, another in the town that way. She'll come see me at least twice a day. 
Praise the Lord, amen. Hey, but, but you know something? Here's the thing about it. When it comes to church, amen, it's a whole different animal. When it comes to church, if they don't sing my song, amen, if they look at you or whatever it is, amen, the enemy begins to work against your mind. He begins to tell you, amen, well, you know they don't like you, or they or they this, or they that, amen, the preacher's ugly, or whatever, or the clerk's mean, I don't know, amen, whatever the devil tells people anymore. But you know something? I want you to understand with me, amen, that I started out, amen, to finish my race, amen. I want you to come to the place that you you have tenacity in your life that says, you know what, no matter what comes my way, I'm not giving up, I'm not throwing in the towel, amen. You got to come to a place in God that says, you know what, I'm, if I got to wipe the tears out of my eyes and go on and do what I'm supposed to do, I'm going to do it anyhow, amen. Amen, I, I, I want you to know with me tonight, amen, that God is looking for somebody that don't throw in the towel over every little bitty thing, amen. I've had a few instances in my life, amen, that I felt like giving up. Anybody ever felt like giving up? besides me I felt like it I thought about it amen but I thought where could I go amen Peter said this amen over in John chapter 6 if you'll read over there when the 70 began to walk away when Jesus had a hard saying he said except you eat of my flesh drink of my blood he said you will not have no eternal life abiding in your part with me and they said it's a hard saying who can hear it amen and, and, and he looks at the other 12 he just lost 70 disciples and he looks at the other 12 and he said are you going to go with them and Peter his answer I love his answer he said to whom shall we go I know somebody said this ain't the only church bless the Lord it is not amen thank God for all the good people out there that's fighting the fight of faith amen but if you let the devil run you out from here he'll run you out from wherever you go Peter said to whom shall we go for you have the words of eternal life amen you know what Peter said Peter messed it up a lot he fell down a whole lot but he made up his mind, amen, that he had found the words of eternal life. You know what he was saying? He said, I finally got somewhere where the word of God is being preached in the power. It's time, amen, that we realize something, amen. Everybody's not preaching with the spirit anymore. I know a lot of good preachers that do. I'm not throwing any rocks at anybody, but a lot of them, amen, you couldn't tell it from a good funeral service. Help me a little bit, amen. A lot of it, you go in, they go through the rhetorics of religion, Amen. And shuffle you out the door after they get your money. We didn't come to get your money tonight. We come tonight to get you in the presence of a living God that can change you. Anybody in here tonight? Amen. How many know that we're living in the last days? And if we are living in the last days, the enemy has, he has end time trickery that he wants to pull on us to pull us out. Amen. Strong delusion, if you will. And he's looking to pull you away from the house of God. First Timothy 4 and 1 said, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times... Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. I don't know about you, but I don't want to give up before the Lord comes back. I want to hold on, amen, until he comes to get me, either by the way of the grave, amen, or by the way of rapture. I want, I want to be ready when he comes or calls. We talk about it a lot and mention it different times, but the five wise and the five foolish, amen, half of the church wasn't ready, amen, according to the parable that Jesus talked about, half of them was not ready amen I don't know about you but I want to be full of the spirit of the living God I want my lamps amen full of oil trimmed and burning I want to be the light that Christ has called me to be somebody said that's easy for you you the preacher it's 10 times to 15 times harder on a pastor than it is somebody that just sits in the seat I want you to know you that you don't understand the fight amen until you stand in front of the enemy when the onslaught of the devil comes against the body of Christ he has to hit the, the under shepherd first amen and it's time that we realize in these last days I don't want to just drag it all the way out to the bloody end I don't want to just go through the motions and hope I make it I want to stand up and be counted as one of them the blood bought fire baptized that won't let go until he blesses us amen so I got a few little things, a few little bullet points I want to give you tonight. Just so I, want you to, I want you to understand with me. Number one, never make a permanent decision on a temp temporary circumstance. You ever felt like just throwing it in town because 
we are so touchy feely. Help me just a little bit. I'm gonna slow down. We we are so we are so easily discouraged. Don't take a whole lot. Don't take a whole lot. Amen. I mean I I, I mean honest to goodness. Amen. I, I've I, if you and it comes back to a love for God. If we love the Lord, Amen. Hey, listen. There may there may be a time that you pick me up and my iPad and throw me out that door, and I may you may not never let me come back in. If that be the case, I'll be found somewhere else. Amen. I don't even got to be the preacher. Amen. I'd, I'd rather not sometimes. I'd rather sit back and be preached too. Amen. But I'm, I'm, you may throw me out, but if you do, I want you to know I'm going somewhere where the anointing of God is allowed to move. I'm going somewhere where souls are being born into the kingdom of God. Amen. I want you to understand with me. The enemy comes, amen, to discourage your faith. And I come tonight to encourage your faith. I come to tell you this. There's some things you've got to endure. There's some things you've got to walk through that's not nice, it's not pretty, it's hard, and you got to make up your mind that I'm not going to throw in the towel just because it got rough. Can I tell you, if the enemy runs you away in the middle of a fight, he'll run you away wherever you go. And it's time to take a stand and stand up and say, I want to be accounted for. I might not be the best, but I'm here. And I've made up my mind. I will never go back. Amen, preacher. Never make a permanent decision on temporary circumstances. Nothing remains the same except God and His promises. Circumstances will change. Situations will change. Amen. And we make too many life-altering decisions based on fleeting emotions and feelings that are linked to situations which are constantly changing. Can I say this? I said this this morning in Sunday school and it's the truth. Amen. Here's how, you, here's how you know when the flesh takes over. When you get mad or you get upset and then you start crying. Amen. And when tears start to flow and you, you, you bring your emotions into it and the enemy knows then that he's got it. I want you to know that if we walk in the spirit we'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Somebody said that's easy to say and hard to do. Yes and amen it is. But we've got got to feed the spirit we've got to pray amen we're living in the end times i believe it with all my heart and if we don't pray now amen if we don't pray now we won't make it we need to study to show ourselves approved a workman that needeth not to be ashamed amen thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path we must have that time with god we fill our minds with everything from facebook to twitter amen to whatever else is out there whatever else they can conjure up. Amen. Instead of, amen, putting our face in the word of God and looking to see what thus saith the word. It's time. God knows. Amen. It's time. He poured this spirit in my spirit for tonight and he said, tell somebody not to give up. Somebody that's fallen down, get up and go on for God. Somebody give him a little praise right there. Romans 8 and 28. And we know all things are working together for the good. For good to them that love God. Amen. Have you ever considered that the trial was sent to you by the Lord to cause you to grow stronger in Him? We blame the devil for everything, don't we? But have you ever considered that it might have been the hand of God that allowed this trial to come in your life to drive you into the face of God? Amen. Hey, uh, have you ever considered, amen, that, 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 that God sees ahead and he knows somebody that's in your life that couldn't get through the trial that you're in and they might be watching your life? Have you ever considered it has nothing to do with you? Amen. Our salvation Pentecostal people, I love you with all my heart. Amen. But we have no vision for the lost. We, a lot of us don't have no vision. Amen. Could care less. We're the only generation in the history of the church to walk out on an altar call. And I dare say, that a lot of our own denomination couldn't even lead somebody in a sinner's prayer if they had to. Amen. And it's time to lay aside such frivol frivolous things. And it's time for you and I, amen, to get serious with God and know why you're here. You're here to be salt and light. You're here to win the lost. You're here to smile at the customers as they come in and reach them for Christ. Amen. Amen. Second Timothy 2 and 3 said, Thou therefore endure hardness. 
endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Endure the hard things in life. Expect them to come. Hey, you know something? When you get saved, there's this love affair between you and God. It's a first love experience. It's talked about in Revelation chapter 2. Amen. And, 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 and God's upset in Revelation chapter 2. Jesus is upset. He said, I have somewhat against you. You have left your first love. Amen. There's that first love experience. Amen. That comes along when you first get saved. Amen. And a lot of people, amen, feel like it's got to be like this the rest of your life. Listen, I love being saved. I love the fact that he loved me first. Amen. I love the fact that Romans 5 and 8 said, but God commended his love toward us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for I love that. I, I like to think about that every once in a while. Amen. But you got to understand with me, amen, that every day is not going to be daisy, sweetheart. Amen. Every day is not going to be goosebumps and higher standing on the ends. Amen. You got to learn how to endure some hardness as a good soldier. Watch what it said. Listen, there's not a soldier right now, amen, on the battlefield for any country anywhere that don't know they're in a fight. Christianity don't know it, but you're in a fight. He called you a soldier and you got to gird up the loins of your mind. You got to hold on to like precious faith and you got to say I'm hanging on. This might be the day that the Lord shall come. If you believe that, give him a little praise right there. Amen. Can I tell you this? If you're for real saved, you'll never be satisfied back out in the world. If you're satisfied back out in the world, you need to get saved. That didn't sound good. Watch it. There it was. Amen. I have to have a good one for that. I'm going to say it now. I'm going to slow it way down. If you can live out in the world and you can be satisfied and it don't bother you to live in sin, you ain't saved. Help me a little bit. There's a radical and essential difference between the righteous and the wicked. I believe it's a no soul salvation. I believe that I know that I know that I know. I, somebody said, oh, my God. I wish I knowed like you can know. All you got to do is pray and believe, amen, and receive, amen. He's not looking to get rid of you. But if you can continue in sin, hoping that grace may abound with no remorse, amen, I don't know that you, your name's been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I, I'm not being mean tonight. I, I, I wanted to move past that, but I got to stay here just for a moment. If what? What you got in the altar has not changed you and it does and you have no conscience of sin whatsoever then you my friend are lost if you're not lost you're so far away from God you can't feel him and if I was that far away from God if I had to crawl I'd get back in the graces of God somehow I want you to understand with me a lot of them have went by the wayside because of a hurt feeling or because of something that happened in their life or in the church and they look and then they go from one church to the next church amen and, they, and they're waiting on somebody to hurt their feelings so they can move on down the road or up the road. Can I tell you, amen, I want you to understand that when he saved you, David said, he brought me up out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock. He put us on a foundation, amen, that we wouldn't be moved by every wind of doctrine. And it's time that the church of the living God make up their mind. I'm in a fight and I'm going to win it. Amen. Number two, watch, watch. Never allow your memories to become greater than your dreams. The past is always, is, is always more comfortable than challenging the future. It is always easier to remember the leaks in the melons in Egypt while pressing toward Canaan. We, we forget how hard it was and what an evil taskmaster that Pharaoh was and the Egyptians was and building those bricks didn't seem so bad. As we're, pre as we're pressing toward Canaan, amen. I had a good friend of mine. I love him, amen. I ain't seen him in a while. I don't know if he's serving God or not. It's according to what day it is. You never know about him. He's on fire for God, bless the Lord. He's gonna preach and start doing camp meetings. And all. Next thing you know, he's smoking crack rock again. I don't know what. I don't know what's up with him, amen. But I, I'll never will forget him, amen. He was pastoring the church and I was trying to help him and I was going over and preaching for him some, amen. And giving, doing business meetings and all kinds. And he'd talk all the time. He'd talk 
talking about all them times he's getting high with a glee in his eye. He talked about all them good times that he had, amen. And then next thing you know, amen, next thing you know, he started laying out of church. He's a pastor and laying out of church, amen. Can I just tell you this? Amen, it's a requirement of a good steward to be found faithful, amen. And he started laying out and then I was having to fill in and send other people. Next thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire, if you will. Next thing you know, amen, he's sitting on the back porch of his house and he's smoking dope and next thing you know he's drinking liquor next thing you know he's chasing women next thing you know he gets prayed through again and he comes to me and wants to pastor another church I said fully on that mess I want you to know amen you gotta have something that you got from God that'll keep you you gotta have the power that on the inside of you that says although I feel like giving up though he slay me yet will I trust him Amen. I have some great and wonderful memories here at Mount Bell. But I have an announcement to make. God's not finished with us yet. I get so weary with people who only talk about God, what he used to do. And I don't care who's listening. Hey, listen, I, they can watch me if they want to. I'd say it for general overseers here and the Pope was here. I get so weary, amen, going to talking about uh, W.F. Bryant. I get so weary talking about what the first church had. My God, what a move of God they had back then. Oh, my Lord. It was wonderful. It was fantastic. They weren't there, and I wouldn't either, amen. Listen, what they're saying is, is this is where we come from. Thank God for where we come from. But I want you to know that God is not done just yet, sweetheart, amen. We always want to run around looking at the past, saying, oh, how God used to move, and we'll never be as close to God as grandma and grandpa. Amen. And oh my God, how they love the Lord. Can I tell you, amen, that they didn't have and they didn't have a patent on it, amen. They didn't have the market cornered on God. We can have as much of God as we'll believe for. We can have oh, as much of him as we're willing to sacrifice for. Amen. And, and I get weary, I get weary. I get weary. All we got, all we can talk about, all we can talk about in the camp meetings and general over uh, and, the, and the general assemblies is what what happened back in the old church. My God, did God die with them people too? I think not. Amen. Can I just tell you this? Amen. God's looking for somebody that he can show himself real through in this generation. God is looking for somebody. Amen. I might be speaking. Amen. I, I, I don't know. I, I may be speaking to the next T.L. Lowry right here in this church. Maybe just a small child that will grow up and turn the world upside down. For the, There may be a woman preacher in here with the anointing of God in her life like Catherine Kuhlman had that laid hands on dead people and raise them up. We have not seen our best days. I come to tell you this, amen, that in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. If this is the last days, then look how God is going to show himself real. Amen. Thank God, amen, for all the things that happened back in those days. I, was, I wrote down some things, amen. There's a little Estes baby they brought here years ago. She married a friend of mine, amen? Jackie Courtney, amen? But she was a baby. She was born blind. They took her over to the old church and laid her on the altars, amen? She didn't have no sight, amen? Laid her on the altars. You know what them old church of God people did? They prayed all night long. You know what happened? Next morning, she had her sight. She still got her sight today. Thank God for the lady that I saw in the 90s get a brand new liver, amen? Thank God, amen, for the little black girl that I saw come here, amen? when we was in the old, old side and Sister Vera laid her hands on that child. Amen. And she had, she had a tumor as big as a basketball and, and the swelling went down and she went back to the doctor. Amen. And the doctor said, we don't know what happened. We know what happened. God showed up. But can I tell you, the God that moved for Vera Rickard is going to be the God that will move for Mount Vale now. Amen. The problem is people want to live in the past. And God is, he is the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. But God has a great future for you, but you'll never get to the future. I tell you what, dude, if you think, I'm, if you think I've lost my mind, just jump in your car and drive home looking backwards. Let me get home first. And then just go down the road and hold her to her, baby. You ever done it? 
Amen. You ain't going to go. You ain't going to make it too far. You ain't going to make it too far. But we do our Christian walk like that. And we say we'll never have what they had. I'll tell you right now. Amen. This move of God is progressive. Amen. Amen. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth. It's a proceeding word. Amen. And thank God for the revelation that they had then. But I want you to know he's not done talking yet. He's still talking. Amen. To those who have an ear to hear what thus saith the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. He's still talking to those that will humble themselves in his presence and worship him. Amen. Can I tell you? Amen. The second hardest job in the house has to be leading of worship because the devil tries to attack everything. Amen. He attacks mics. He attacks people, pianos, keyboards, any wires. It don't make no difference. He gets in the midst of everything because he knows if we can get in the, pray in, in the presence of the Lord, he going to talk to us. I want you to know I believe all those things. I live through all those things. I seen a lady over there on the other side, the cat is still over there in the old pulpit. We prayed for a woman. The cast fell off. The doctor said, we don't know what happened. Her arm was shattered and God healed it. I will, you know, I believe that. I seen that. I experienced that. But I'm looking for greater works shall you do. Amen. Because he went to the Father. Jeremiah 29 11. You ought to be able to quote it. It's the, it's the Pentecostal John 3:16. For I know the thoughts I think toward you. Do you know what he thinks about you? He thinks about you riding down the road looking in the rearview mirror. He said, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. You know what I expect when I come? Every time I come, I expect God to call the backsliders home. I come every time with a spirit of expectation to know that he's God and he can do whatever he wants. That's why I got out of his way this morning. I didn't want to, I didn't want to mess nothing up. I would have messed it up this morning if I got in his way. He was moving by his spirit. He was touching. He was helping. He was healing. Amen. He was restoring people. Amen. I expect to see the sinner saved when I come to the house of God. You know, somebody told me, somebody was telling me uh, uh, today, I was talking to somebody today on the phone, and they said, our pastor got up and he preached on the evils of the tongue. I said, he's a real smart man. I said, he's probably a lot smarter than me. I said, but I don't know if he realized it or not, but there was a lot of people that were there in that place because it's a big church. I said, there was a lot of people came that was probably lost, that was probably backslid. And I said, why would he come and talk about the evils of the tongue when he could have stood up and said, I want you to know there's hope for the lost and dying world because Jesus Christ came to save sinners. I expect to see the devils cast it out. And I expect some of y'all to run out the door. Oh, I expect to see your children and mine growing in God and, and one day leading this church to the levels we never saw if God don't come back. Haggai 2 and 9 said, The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. We can't live off of what used to happen. We need a right now experience in God. Remember that some things are not to be conquered but just survived. You ever just went through something and just said, golly, I didn't, it wasn't pretty, but I made it. It was ugly, man. It got ugly. I, mean, I cried. I, mean, thought, I, thought, I, thought, I thought I'd been forsaken, but God showed up, and I survived. somehow or another, I survived. Somehow or another, I come out with my life, and I've still got my mind, and I still want to serve God. You know what? Joseph, he survived the pit, headed to his destiny. Joseph survived the backbiting of his brothers and being cast into a pit, and they pulled him out of the pit. He, he did, it wasn't glorious. It wasn't wonderful. Amen. Amen. He didn't conquer the pit. He didn't come out of there speaking in tongues. Amen. He just survived the pit. Amen. Headed toward his destiny. He only survived Potiphar's house. Amen. But it propelled him to his destiny. See, watch this right here. I want to tell you this right here. Any day you don't give up and fall in the towel is a day that you won. I don't, I don't care what they say. Any day when 
when the enemy comes in against you, I like what the brother said the other Sunday night, like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against any day you can come out and you still sanctified. It's a, it's a win, sweetheart. Amen. He only, he just barely survived Potiphar's house. Potiphar's wife, she was fine. You know she was. And she throwed herself at the man. You know what he said? He said, how can I do this evil? Amen. While the Lord is watching me and he barely survived. You know what? It propelled him and it moved him on. Amen. To the prison house. You know what happens? If we don't go from glory to glory, if we can't have six and a half good days a week, we're mad at God. Amen. But watch this. He barely, just barely, Barely did he get by in the prison, but when he left the prison, he went to the palace. He did. He he didn't conquer the prison. He didn't conquer nothing at Potiphar's house. He didn't conquer the pit. Amen. He just survived them. But one day, because he was faithful, one day because he held on to his faith, he was propelled into the destiny that God gave him, and he became the governor of all Egypt. Moses barely survived the bulrushes, but God brought him to his destiny. I was saying about this, when my kids were small, I laid 21 days flat on my back after surgery, and I dropped one check for $11. I barely survived it, but it propelled me to my destiny that I could believe God for anything. When, me and, when Norman and I were first married, we lost our home and almost everything we had in a fire. We survived. And God brought us to our destiny. We went five miles up the road, rented a house, got all of our stuff bought, all of our stuff back, just about had everything bought back. Somebody broke in and stole everything we had. I didn't conquer it, but we survived it. And it pushed me and it propelled us. To our destiny. James said, watch, 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 watch this. James said, my brethren, count it all joy. I'm going to back up and read that again. Can I read that again? My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Friend, anybody tonight can quit. But if you'll not get if you'll not give up, I feel something in this house tonight. If you'll not give up, you'll win the victory. You'll win the victory. But you got to keep on keeping on. James 1 12 said, Blessed is the man that endures temptation. For when he's tried, modern day spin doctors have destroyed the gospel of Jesus Christ because they took the trial out of it. And anybody that's going through the trial don't have the faith that they have to hear them say it. But I want you to understand with me the, the road that leads to glory one day after a while. The, the path that leads you to heaven is filled with mountains and valleys and rivers, trials and tests. I said, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Hey, watch this. This is my last scripture. Can you believe it? You ready? 2 Timothy 4. What's what he said? Paul said, I fought a good fight. Paul said, I had to fight. I come to tell you tonight, you're in a fight. If you felt it intensify, it's because of the hour we're living in. Evil men are waxing worse and worse, sweetheart. He said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. Watch this. I kept the faith. Henceforth there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give to me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also who love his appearing. Paul writing to young Timothy, he said, you better be ready, son. You in for a fight. He said, you got to gird up the loins of your mind, and you better be ready. 
We have an enemy. We have an adversary that wants to destroy your faith. You know what Paul said? Paul left that in there. He made sure he put that in there. He talked about the fight. He talked about finishing what God called him to do. But he said, I kept. He said, Timothy, he said, he said, it's expedient for you that you keep the faith. Can I tell you tonight, while he's playing whatever he wants to play, brother, you play whatever you want to. You're in a fight. You're in a fight to the bitter end. You know, the Bible said that we'd be hated of all men in this country that was founded on Judeo-Christian values. They hate us. They hate us. They seek to divide and conquer the, the country. Amen. Amen. And I submit, I submit to you today that racism only, uh, only is in the minds of mostly of those on television and those that's in political realms because they divide. I don't know anybody. But we're living in the end times when evil men are waxing worse and worse. And our own country turns against the church. Our own country. They're not against those, they're not against those that are conforming to the world. They're not against any other, any other faith that believes in other gods. But the church of Jesus Christ has been under attack from the time that Jesus ascended. You men of Galilee, why stand you gazing upward? This same Jesus that you see going away shall come again in like manner. Since he ascended to the right hand of the Father and began to make intercession for the church, we've been in a fight for our lives. And can I just tell you this? If you don't make up your mind in these last days, they ain't no tip and toe through the tulip, sweetheart. They just, it's over with. Just get up, realize you're a soldier. You, you're, you've been thrown in the middle of a fight you didn't ask for. But you have to understand also, as David said, the battle belongs to the Lord. I, I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but I'm talking to somebody that's in the fight. I'm talking to somebody that the enemy's trying to get you to lay your armor down and walk on. He, he loves division, amen? He's, he's into subtraction and division. And God's into addition and multiplication. He's into addition, added to the church daily. Such as, I live by that. You know that? He's adding to the church every day, such as should be saved. You know something? In this last, this would be the worst place to walk off from your faith from right here at Mount Bell where God's moving. Can I tell you this? This amazes me that we have folk that come here who are blessed by the presence of God. They thrive, they grow, and others just fall away, just wither up. I'm thinking, my God, I hope Jesus comes and gets a church somewhere and he starts pastoring. I, I don't know what it would take. And, it's, and, and every time, I just don't feel nothing no more. Well, you reckon that's my fault? If it's my fault, I'll repent to you and God. But if it's your fault, you need to repent. I'm not looking for a reason to get out of here. I'm looking for a reason to hold on until I hear the sound of the trumpet. Until I know that my family's saved and ready to go. Amen. I'm going to hold on to the last breath leaves my body. Hey, hey, can I, can I, can I tell you this? I'm on, I'm on a, I, I guess I am. I'm, I'm getting old and mean, I guess. But I wouldn't give you a quarter for Joel Osteen. I know he's your favorite preacher, but that's all right. That's right. And you, send, you send him your money if you want to. I wouldn't give him a quarter. But I loved his daddy, John. Anybody remember John? John Osteen lay a dime. And, 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 and he, he took a little feed store and turned it into a mega church. Signs, miracles, and wonders. God sanctified and baptized that little Baptist preacher and, and, and sent him forth. And miracles was in all in the house. He prayed for his wife. He's only supposed to live four weeks. She's 80-something year old. She's still living. He dead and she's still living. And he's laying there and he's laying in his bed and he's dying. And the room's full of reporters. And they told him, be respectful. Don't say nothing. He ain't spoke. He ain't eat. He ain't drank nothing in four days. And his breath's getting raspy. He's getting the rattles. And one reporter eases up beside him. And he said, Mr. Osteen, 
you still mad at me because I said that about jo uh, Joel last night. Mr. Osteen, what do you think about Jesus now? That after all these years you served him and now you're on your deathbed. What do you think about this man they call Jesus now? That you're about to leave this world. They said the old preacher opened his eyes, looked at the reporter, and he said, His mercy endureth forever. Closed his eyes and went to his heavenly Father. He held on. Can I tell you this? I come to tell somebody tonight, hold on. Heaven will be worth the journey. I come to tell somebody after a while, we've got a bunch over on the other side that's looking for us. We can't quit now. You can't throw in the towel. You can't give up now. We're too close home. Stand, stand, stand. Hurry. Maybe this message wasn't for everybody, but it's for somebody. It's for those that are in the fight of their life. I come tonight to tell you to hang on. I come to tell you His mercy endures forever. I come to tell you that heaven will be worth the journey when you get there. Watch this, watch this. We're going King James. I know young people don't like it, but I can't help it. I'm King James. I'm Wherefore seen, Hebrews said, we are encompassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. You know what he said? The writer of Hebrews said, it's, he said, ever now and then they get to look over the balconies of heaven at us. Wherefore seen, we are encompassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us, people on this earth, let us lay aside the weight and the sin that does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. I come to encourage somebody to run. I come to tell somebody that you got people on the other side that are counting on you being there and you can't quit on my walls. I got, hey, I got some visits this week. If I could find it in the King James Bible where it said headbutt them in the name of Jesus, I would. But when I see them, if I have to get them by the ears, I'm going to get them by the ears. They're coming back to church. They can't go to hell on my watch. I won't have it. Amen. If they do, they're going to have to move out of this state because I'm going to run them down. I'm, I'm going to aggravate them to death until they get themselves right with God. They messed up coming to this crazy man's church. We ain't having that. We ain't having that here. And I'm opening this altar. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I'm opening this altar for you and you and you and you and for all those that the enemies tried to get you to throw in the towel. All those the enemies said, your best days are already behind you. Just float along. For those that feel discouraged and feel like it's time just to give up. And looking around at the economy that we're living in. I know they hated the dude before us and there's probably a lot of subject matter to hate on, but we weren't paying $6 a gallon for gas. Build back better is a dumpster fire if you ask me. And I hate it. I hate it. I was hoping he'd do something. But look what we got now. Babies ain't got no food. Dumpster fire if you ask me. Amen. People say, I don't know what I'm going to do. The food. Fooey on the food. God's going to feed his people. Somebody say, I don't know what I'm going to do about the gas. Fooey on the gas. God's going God to give you the gas you need. Somebody say, I don't know what I'm going to do. The economy. Who cares? We live on the economy of heaven. And God is going to make a way for you. He's going to make a way. Would you come? Would you come and bring that thing and lay it on the altar and say, I'm taking, if you got a quit in your pocket, you ever heard that? People say, when I get around to it, never did see one, maybe one, somebody have one. If you got a quit in your pocket, I want you to bring it up here and lay it on this altar and say, I refuse to quit now. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Would you come? Would you come and bring it and lay it on the altar saying, sissy? Bring that quit and put it on him. Say nothing better than you, Jesus.
Praise the Lord. Can we give the Lord a good praise tonight? Amen. Please can continue to pray as long as they need. I like what our pastor preached tonight. Don't ever quit. Don't ever give up. It's going to be well worth the journey. Matter of fact, the Bible says, He endures to the end, shall we say. Amen. So let's pray. You'll be dismissed. Hey, come back Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. Amen. Don't forget Coffee to Word Monday night, Tuesday night, Overcomers, prayer, all that good stuff. I forgot one uh, small group, if you will, and there's our pastor's very own Moral Truth on Friday nights at 6 o'clock. Y'all to tune in and watch it on Facebook Live. Amen. So, with all that being said, all hearts and minds are clear. Let's pray and be dismissed tonight. Father, we come to you today, God, giving you thanksgiving and praise, God. We thank you for the move of your spirit. We thank you for the lives that were touched and changed here today, Father, Lord God. We ask you, God, to go with us, God, for the strength and the power and the might of a risen Savior down on the inside of us, Father God. Help us endure to the end, Father, Lord and God. God, we ask you right now to be with your people, Father God, and we ask it right now in the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.